The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning here at 5 a.m. and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. It is the day for so many of our local students heading back to class after summer vacation. Yeah, tens of thousands of students across Kern County, especially in the Bakersfield area, will head back to the classroom. Some students returned yesterday, some earlier this month. Former Kern County Democratic Congressman TJ Cox is out of jail following his arrest yesterday morning by the FBI. Cox was booked into Fresno County Jail, accused of multiple fraud schemes dating back nearly a decade. 17's political reporter Maddie Gannon has more. Tuesday morning, the Department of Justice announcing former Kern County Representative TJ Cox was indicted by a federal grand jury with 28 counts of fraud. The federal government if they're going to charge you, they're not going to spare any expense to make sure that their allegations are correct. According to the indictment obtained by 17 News, Cox is accused of knowingly using false promises and pretenses to collect millions of dollars from potential investors to his businesses and diverting the money into unauthorized bank accounts. A case like this, just having a glance at it with respect to the charges, it's a serious charge. The charges ranging from money laundering to campaign contribution fraud, all allegedly taking place starting in 2013 through 2020, including the two years he was a sitting member of Congress. In one instance, during his congressional campaign, the indictment accuses Cox of depositing money from one of his off-the-book bank accounts into a family member's account. That money was then used to make three different contributions to his campaign under the names of Cox's family members. These are allegations, and um, he is, uh, for all intent and purposes, uh, innocent unless and until found guilty by a jury of his peers. But for the most part, any politician who engages in this type of conduct, um, I, I'm not so shocked anymore. Here in the 21st Congressional District. The Democrat represented Kern County in Washington for two years after he unseated Republican David Valadeo during the 2018 National Blue Wave before Valadeo won the seat back in 2020. In a statement to 17 News, Valadeo said, quote, our 2020 campaign exposed T.J. Cox for what he is, a shady guy who continued to put his needs above the valley. Valadeo's 2022 Democratic challenger Rudy Salas told 17 News, quote, T.J. Cox has disgraced himself. If convicted, Cox could face up to a combined 55 years in prison and thousands of dollars in fines. Realistically, that's not really what happens. Um, you have to take a look at it in terms of what the offense level is. And then ultimately, everything is going to be hashed out in a plea agreement. Maddie Gannon, 17 News. As we mentioned, Cox was released from Fresno County Jail yesterday afternoon following an arraignment in court where he pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. Afterwards, Cox told reporters he looks forward to vigorously defending himself against the allegations. To be frank, I haven't read the indictment yet, so I don't know what the charges are. Uh, and so uh, all I can tell you is that I've been here for 20 years. I've always been trying to help the community uh, make life a better place for all of us. But I tell you what, uh, politics is a tough game. I wouldn't be in this position today, but for the politics, and I think we all know that. David Torres, who is not representing Cox, says the next step for Cox will likely be a detention hearing. Also in your Crime Watch this morning, local law enforcement says despite online rumors, there is no serial killer or abductor roaming the streets of Bakersfield. The police department says they are aware of a social media post circulating online that says there is a quote, serial killer or abductor who is currently hunting in Bakersfield. The police department says that this social media hoax has been posted all across the country and has no basis in truth. And just a reminder that any student in the Kern High School District can get free breakfast and lunch on campus for the entire school year. Yes, that's right. The free meals are part of a national program to help reduce problems associated with hunger and increase a student's chance for success. Under the program, students have access to daily breakfast and lunch without having to qualify for eligibility based on a family's income. KHSD says it's still important to complete either a meal application or an alternative income form depending on your student's school. 
To Washington now and the results of a highly watched primary election. Republican Congresswoman and a well-known adversary of former President Donald Trump, Liz Cheney, struggled to hold on to her seat, battling a candidate endorsed by the former president. A Trump-backed candidate in Alaska Senate race, Kelly Shibaka, also advanced to the November election along with incumbent Lisa Murkowski, another staunch critic of the former president. NBC Susan McGinnis reports on the latest on Choosy Cheney, Cheney losing her battle and the midterm election cycle. Today, our highest duty. Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney suffering a brutal but not unexpected loss in Tuesday's midterm primary election. I love what our party has stood for, but I love my country more. The co-chair of the January 6th committee losing her seat to Trump-backed Harriet Hageman, who supports Trump's false claims the 2020 election was stolen. I will fight every day to block the destruction of our country. Hageman winning in a landslide, more confirmation of Trump's stranglehold on the GOP despite multiple investigations surrounding him. Cheney says she'll serve out her term and continue her fight. I will do whatever it takes to ensure Donald Trump is never again anywhere near the Oval Office. The buzz growing louder about a possible Cheney presidential run. Another Republican incumbent critical of Donald Trump winning her reelection bid, Senator Lisa Murkowski, a projected winner in Alaska's Senate race. I hope that we do not become the party of Donald Trump. And Sarah Palin returning to national politics, advancing in her bid for Alaska's House seat. The Democratic Party celebrating President Biden signing the Inflation Reduction Act into law. With this law, the American people won and the special interests lost. The sweeping package covering climate, health care, and much more of the Democrats' agenda. Republicans warn wasteful spending will not reduce inflation. The president enjoying one of several legislative victories and hoping it gives his party a boost ahead of fast approaching midterm elections. The president and cabinet members plan to travel the country in coming weeks to tell voters how the new law will benefit them. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. So what is next for Liz Cheney? Savannah Guthrie will have an exclusive interview with Cheney about her future plans later this morning on the Today Show. Back here at home, what would a one cent sales tax increase do for people living in unincorporated Kern County if passed by voters in November? That question is at the core of a series of community education workshops as county officials engage the public on this impending ballot measure. A one cent sales tax increase similar to the one passed by the city of Bakersfield just a few years ago, is one way to offset revenue losses to the county as property taxes from the oil and gas industry continue to decline. There are two community education workshops planned for this week to discuss the unincorporated public safety, vital services, and local control measure. Sheriff Donna Youngblood, DA Cynthia Zimmer, and Fire Chief Aaron Duncan will be there to field questions from the public. It's happening at 6 o'clock tonight at the River Lakes Ranch Community Center in Rosedale and 7 o'clock tomorrow at the Hummel Hall in Rosemond. The public is encouraged to attend. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.